Dear sewing friends, this is our project for today. Isn't this beautiful? It is a gorgeous camisole and can you spot a bust dart? That's right! I know you have been waiting for this and here it is. And today we will start with a very simple hands-on way of adding a bust dart and I truly, truly think that it will make things so much easier moving forward. Because remember, if I can do it, then you can do it as well. So let's get started. Now for this project I used about half a yard of fabric so this is a great project that does not require a lot of yardage but of course it will all depend on your style, your size and the final garment as well. And I had a half a yard of this main fabric, beautiful floral print and half a yard for lining. Now yes mine is fully lined but my fabric is also slightly translucent so you don't have to line yours. You can actually just make a facing or finish it with a bias tape or a rolled hem. So really many great options. Now you will also need about half a yard of your practice fabric because that's how we will form a dart. But don't you worry, it really is super easy. So first, the measurements. Our first measurement is going to be back waist length. So from the nape all the way to your waist. Go ahead and grab a measuring tape, measure it, and that's what's gonna go on your pattern paper. Once you're done with that measurement, go ahead and divide it in half right away. Now go ahead and grab your measuring tape and measure your full waist circumference. Then divide by four as we're going to use only a quarter and add half an inch to that. And that's the measurement that's going to go right over here. Next, we're going to repeat the same steps for your bust circumference. Take your full bust measurement, divide it by four, and add only a quarter of an inch to that, and that's the measurement that's gonna go on this line. And the reason why we're only adding a quarter of an inch of ease is because this is a sleeveless design, and usually in sleeveless designs, you add less ease around the bust. Next, I would like my top to be a little bit longer than my waist length, so I'm going to add 4 inches below my waistline, but you can do whichever way you prefer. And then for the width of it, I'm going to take quarter of my full hip circumference and add half an inch to it as well. There we go. Now before we move to the next step, let's go ahead and connect and make a side seam. Now first I usually connect it with straight lines and then I smooth it out so that way it really creates a beautiful side seam. Now let's go ahead and turn it and start drafting the top of our cami. Now go ahead and divide this part and this part in half. And once you have done that, draw a little box like you see me do on the screen. Now this is your bust line, go ahead and divide this measurement by 5 and here from this edge I'm marking one fifth of it. Now for this next point what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to mark bolder the points that are going to be critical to the construction of this cami. And here's a very important point, please feel free to move these points to the right, to the left, lower, higher, because it really is up to your preference and how this will fit on your body. So please make sure that when you make your test garment and you identify what you would like to do differently, you definitely don't feel like you can't move these points around. You sure can and you should for the best fit of your garment. Now go ahead and connect these two points. This will form the front neckline and somewhere in the middle go ahead and drop it by about quarter of an inch and then curve it in. I find that this gives a much smoother v-neck and I personally prefer that but if you like a really sharp v-neck leave it as is. For this next step we're actually going to connect the points of the other side and that is going to form the underarm section or the arms eye so to speak. Now here we will need to curve in towards this little point and first you will use your pencil so that way it's a little bit easier for you to determine that curve and then you can also use a French curve if you have it that will make it so much easier but if you don't, don't worry about it. You see I'm doing it with a pencil as well. In fact the first curved line that I outlined wasn't necessarily as curved as I I would like it to be so I did curve it in a little bit lower because you have to remember this is going to sit under your arms or in the armpit area so you definitely want to make sure that you don't have too much extra fabric in there. Now once you're done and happy with the way this looks let's go ahead and cut the test fabric out. 
Now you're going to cut two of these, one for the front, one for the back, completely identical. And if you want later on, you can adjust the neckline on the back to, for it to be a little bit higher. But for right now, two completely identical pieces and some straps as well. Now when you're cutting your fabric, whether that is for your test garment or your actual garment, please do not forget to include your seam allowances as they're not included in any of the patterns that I draft on my channel. Now here's a little tip. You can take it, you can leave it whichever way, but I thought to mention it as I do find it very useful. Now when I do my test garments, only on the test garments, especially the ones that are sleeveless like this camisole for example, I tend to not to include seam allowances in the underarm section and in the neckline section as well. Because in this case, I truly want to see how it's going to sit on the body without seam allowances. Because think about it, if you cut this test garment out with 5 eighths of an inch seam allowance, you're going to have quite a bit of extra fabric that is going to look like a part of your garment, but in reality, when you sew it up, it's going to go into seam allowance. However, of course, when you cut your actual fashion fabric, seam allowances will be added everywhere. For this next step, I just take a thread and hand sewing needle and I baste the side seams really, really quickly. And then I also baste the straps to the back of the cami. In the front, I usually secure them with a pin needle first, so that way when I put it on myself, I can adjust the length of the straps easily. If you do that and when you do that, please make sure that you don't get hurt by the pin needles. Once all of that is done, go ahead and put the test garment on yourself. First, take a look how the bag fits. Next, adjust the strap length. And now you will most likely see the gaping underarm section like this. And exactly this part is going to become a bust start. Now grab a few pin needles, pinch the gap closed and pin it. Make sure that you create a smooth transition from the underarm section to the area near your bust apex. Now while we're at it, let's take two additional measurements that are going to help us out. First, from the top of your cami straight down to the fullest part of your bust. This may or may not coincide with your bust apex. And then the distance between two bust apexes. Once done, take the test garment off and we're going to finalize the pattern. First, I'm going to trace this pattern onto a new piece of paper with two minor adjustments. One will be the length, I would like for it to be a little bit longer. And the other one, I'm going to adjust the top of the cami for one inch wide straps. I did like how they look and feel. And for them to fit into this cami, this top opening needs to be half an inch on each side, which will make it one inch wide in total. So perfect for our straps. Now mark that center back is cut on the fold and the grain line, and we're pretty much done with the back pattern piece. Now I'm going to copy it one more time and that is going to be the front pattern piece that we're going to adjust and then just the sewing part and you'll be done. Now I'm also going to outline mine in red so you can see a little bit better. And here, once all done, remember those two extra measurements that we took after trying it on? Well, let's mark them right now. So from the top of the cami all the way down, that was the first measurement, and starting at the center front on the same level over here, you're going to mark half of the measurement of the distance between two bust apex points. And the reason why we're using only half is because we're only working with the half of the front pattern here. Now take your test garment and measure the full width of the dart at its widest part. So basically you're going to open the dart and measure it. And then you can mark it approximately right here in the middle of your underarm section on your pattern. Now it doesn't really matter where exactly you mark it, so don't stress about it. Now, darts usually never go all the way up to the bust apex as it does not really create the desirable look. So you can move yours about half an inch to the left. Sometimes I move mine up to one inch depending on what fabric and what design am I working with. Once done, draw the dart legs and you have created a bust dart. If you want, you can leave it right there where it's at, not a problem, but I would like to move mine to the side seam. And here's how to do it. 
From this point, draw a perpendicular line to the side seam. And now, cut through these lines and you will cut almost all the way through, but not quite, so that the paper is still attached. Now, move the paper to close the dart on top and by doing that, you just opened up a dart at a side seam. And it's that easy. And if you do this, make sure that you tidy up the underarm section of the camisole and create a really nice smooth line like you see me do right here. Now if you want, you can move this dart even lower down the side seam for it to be slightly on the angle, but I like mine to be right where it's at. So go ahead and mark it like so and you are done. <laughs> Mark the center front to be cut on the fold and the crane line and let's get cutting the actual fabric for the cami. In my case, I'm going to cut one back and one front from the main fabric, then one back and one front for the lining and two straps. Of course, don't forget the seam allowances and add them as you cut your fabric. And for the first step in the assembly, we will actually do the darts. So go ahead and mark the darts on the wrong side of the front pattern piece. And you can do that with a heat erasable pen, with chalk, or just pins, whichever one you have. And after that, I usually baste them together with just a hand sewing needle and a thread. Once done, starting at the side seam, sew the darts on the sewing machine. And for the best result, I would suggest to not to backstitch at the end of the dart. Just simply tie the thread in the knot. Now you will repeat these steps for the lining as well if you're doing it as I am. Once you're done with your darts, don't forget to press them for the best result. Now here I'm actually understitching the neckline and the underarm sections on both the lining and the fashion fabric and I'm doing that about one eighth of an inch away from the edge of the fabric and the reason for it is because the fabric is pretty flimsy and I want to make sure that I don't stretch those areas out of shape as I'm handling the fabric in the process of sewing. Next, I'm going to finish the raw edges of the side seams first as I'm going to press them open later after they're sewn together. So I have set my serger here for a rolled hem, but you can totally use a tightly spaced zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or adjust the seams for French seams. Totally up to you whichever way you choose to go. Now, a very important point to add that this is not a seam finish that you would see regularly. Usually, you would use a rolled hem on the serger for an actual hem of the garment. However, I truly do like the way it feels and looks and the finish that it gives me on this particular seam working with this particular fabric. So if you want, you can use that and try it as well. If not, no worries. Just use a zigzag stitch overlock on your serger or any other of your preferred methods. Once that is done, Place the front and the back right sides together, line up the side seams and sew with a straight stitch. Once that was done, go ahead and press your side seams open and it looks like this. Now, after repeating all of the same steps for the lining as well, I'm going to take my main fabric and the lining, placing them right sides together, matching the front with the front and the back with the back. I'm going to stitch the top all the way around leaving the openings for the straps. Now once that is done, go ahead and notch the area of the v-neck. Now my seam allowance is 3 eighths of an inch, however I still do three little notches at the very bottom of the v-neck so that way it really turns out really well. If that would have been a really smooth curve, I would need to notch, but in this case I do three small notches and then turn it right side out. Now we're going to understitch the lining. So what you're going to do with seam allowances towards the lining. So you will need to make sure that you brush your seam allowances towards the lining. You will understitch on the side of the lining very, very closely to the edge. Now you can see me do that on the screen right now. Now here's a really important point. You won't be able to understitch all the way up to where the ties will go in. And that's all right. I usually pick a placement until when I can actually understitch. And then I stop there and I start on the other side. 
For the straps, you will cut the length that you need plus a little bit extra. So that way it's a little bit easier for you to sew and you have some room to work with. Now for the width of the straps, if you're doing it the same way that I am doing, I'm going to cut mine at two and a half inches and that is already including the seam allowance. So that way, if I stitch with quarter of an inch seam allowance, I'm going to get one inch strap. Once done, go ahead and turn the strap right side out. Here's an important tip. Don't place the seam on the edge of the strap, but instead position it in the middle. So that way when you're wearing your camisole, you won't see any stitches on either side of your strap, but instead it's going to be on the bottom of the strap, right in the middle of it. Once your straps are done, let's go ahead and insert them and you're pretty much done with your camisole. And here I do exactly the same thing as I did on the test garment. First, I will insert and stitch them into the back and then I will leave them loose up front. I will put the camisole on myself one more time and then I will make sure that I really get that perfect length of the strap. So when you're inserting your straps, make sure that the right side of the strap is facing the right side of the fabric so that way you don't end up with the seam facing up. Once you have inserted the strap, you're just going to sew across the opening of the strap on the cami, securing both the opening and the strap. Here I would suggest stitching over your strap opening and the strap a couple of times to really secure it in place. All right, the straps are attached, the lining is understitched, and the last thing for us to do would be to tidy up all loose threads and finish the hem of our garment. Now for the hem, here's a little tip. What I usually do is I finish the main fabric of the project first with the hem, and then I do the lining. So that way I can truly determine what length of the lining I want to be in the garment. Now to finish both of the hems for the lining and the main project fabric, I used rolled hem or pin hem, and I did it manually with just a regular sewing machine presser foot without using the rolled hem foot. And to see how to do that, please reference this video where I discuss five techniques how to hem your garments. This technique there is described really well that will give you all the visuals that you will need to finish this garment. Now a quick mention over here, if you are a member of this channel, first of all, thank you so much for being a member from the bottom of my heart. I truly appreciate it. And second, make sure that you go to the membership tab on my channel page to discover all of the links for all of the perks that you get as a thank you for joining the memberships, including members extra video for this particular camisole where I answer some of the questions and give you some more ideas and instruction sheets on how to draft this camisole step by step. So definitely, if you are a paying member of the channel, please make sure that you check out your membership tab to get all of the perks that you deserve. And that's it, your camisole is done. And wasn't that pretty easy? I do think that it was pretty easy and straightforward. Yes, it was a little bit extra work with moving the dart, tracing the pattern a couple of times, forming the dart, making the test garment, but I truly think that it gives you that hands-on knowledge that you will need to really understand how the darts are formed and why are they formed and where are they formed. So I truly think that this is a really good hands-on thing to do when you're just starting to venture into the darts on the pattern. So thank you so much for watching. I truly hope that this was helpful, that you enjoyed, and that you will make yourself something beautiful. And I will see you very soon in another video. Bye!